Gets it. Here's the thing, and D, but you know this. Yep. Ricky is a light. You white. can't play wide receiver at San Francisco unless you will block. If so. you don't block, you're not playing receiver yeah. there. <clears throat> so whoever it is, it needs to be good with the ball in their hands, which Pearsall is, and has to be tough and willing to block, which he'll do. Now, back to the morning roast with Vontae and Shasky. That was Bill Belichick on the Pat McAfee Show. Ricky Pearsall, your newest member of the 49ers, started off in Arizona State in 2019, played three seasons there, transferred to Florida, played his final two seasons there last year, 65 catches, 965 yards, 6'1", 190, 23 years old. He's a fellow Virgo like your boy. September 9th is his birthday. He'll be 24 years old. I'm on the 15th. We're brothers already there. Horoscope or, you know, same sign or whatnot. Um, by the way, this segment is sponsored by Go to State Lumber. Serving the Bay Area for three generations. When you succeed, we succeed. Visit go to statelumber.com. Ricky Pearsall. I see all the calls here. We're going to get to everybody. Ricky Pearsall, how we feel at the bottom. CJ Stroud was devastated. Devastated. Did that make you feel more confident in the pick? It seen, did. Seeing the reactions, I, I needed. I needed that. Okay. I needed that because I'm not going to lie to you. I didn't. I didn't study Ricky Pierce all a lot. Okay. I know he was on the board, but I was. I was hung up on the Texas dudes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was hung up on the LSU guys. I was hung up on every other receiver that I thought would project to be in the first round. I didn't think Pierce all was going to be a first round pick. I thought he'd be mid second. Now, my homegirl, Sarita, who works out there in Baltimore, she's a diehard Florida Gator fan. Uh, she's out there with our sister station, 1057 The Fan, out there in Baltimore. She's a big-time Florida Gator fan. And she goes, I can't believe y'all took Ricky from me, 49ers. So I asked her, I said, man, is he legit? What's, what's the deal? She goes, love Ricky. Y'all reached a little high for him, but I think he will produce in that offense. And that's been a consistent so far. Consensus when it comes to Ricky Persall. Everybody's happy about him. In terms of football people and people who've watched them very, very closely. Slick I just think it's really difficult when you get the 31st pick to, you know, when you're not trading around and, and it's like, just take the guy that you like on your board. Like, so if they took him at 38, everyone would love him, but they took him at 31 and people think it's bad value. Like, So my estimation is like, just draft the right guy. It yeah. doesn't matter where you select them. If you take the right person and it ends up working out, no one cares about the individual pick. You know what I mean? Like in terms of slot. Now, I understand there's value in, in how to work the board and all those things. But at the end of the day, we need players to contribute. And so if this guy ends up being a player and he's a keeper, no one will care if he went 31 or 38. Now, will you love to pick if IU gets traded or Debo gets traded? So now, that's, then that's, now, that's where we're going here. What happens with IU, I think, is really interesting because he's not a like-for-like switch out for yep. Ayuk, which is why a lot yep. of people weren't highlighting him in Niner land. Right. All the mock drafts that Niner people do and all the breakdowns and everything, most people were saying, well, if they trade Ayuk, we're looking for someone who could play a little more on the line of scrimmage the and be a receiver. bigger dude on the outside. Yep. That's not what he does. So was it a smokescreen the entire time, the Ayuk stuff, to kind of like get everyone off the sniff of who yep. they wanted in the slot? I don't know. Could they still trade Ayuk and get you know Adonai Mitchell or someone else, Johnny Wilson? I'm just throwing out names here. Keon Coleman. I don't know that that could hi hypothetically still happen here. Um, I want to see him with Ayuk. That's, that's what, what I want to see. That's what I want to see. There, like now teammates. that they've executed yeah. it, like that's kind of what yeah. I want to see. Because I'm looking at like you were talking about this. The b b cater the team to the skill set of Brock Purdy. Ayuk with this guy. Now, now we're cooking a little. Now, Ayuk and uh, Persall were teammates at Arizona State uh, playing under Coach Herm Edwards. Coach Herm Edwards will join us at 8 o'clock today on oh, the morning Oh, let's Rose go. After shameless shout-outs here. So, look, the one knock on him, because there's a lot of positives with him, but uh -huh. the one knock on him is something that we saw at the Super Bowl, is that the Niners' inability to beat press man mm -hmm. and to get off the line of scrimmage. And that's something. Man. And that's something that Persall is going to have to get better at. He's got to get stronger, get to the NFL weight room. I believe that'll happen. Get his diet right, get his food, get his nutrition right. But he's got to learn how to. That's the one knock that all the player, all the players are saying. Look, he's got to get better at breaking jams, breaking press man, because they don't have a lot of experience of that in college. So that's something I'm going to look at in training camp, whether or not he's beating press man and getting off the line of scrimmage. No, we don't know right now, given everything that we're we're looking at. It, you know, is this a quote unquote replacement for Debo or Ayuk? We, we don't know. Just looking at the room right now, as it stands right now, I think he's going to be better than Ray Ray McLeod. I think he's going to be better than Chris Connolly. I think he'll be better than whatever they had. You know, now they got Trent Chris Taylor. Chris Connolly, we're all just talking about recently. 
I mean, they're, they're no, do you know who their number catches in the postseason? Do you know who their number three wide receiver <laughs> was this year? <laughs> Jawan Jennings. Do you know how many catches he had this year in the regular Probably like season? Thirty-five. No, nineteen. <laughs> nineteen. There you go. He had nineteen catches. <laughs> so, like, and I like Jawan that's, Jennings. That's why I didn't want to trade Brandon Ayuk. This whole conversation well, about trading Ayuk, top heavy. knowing that boy, you don't have a lot behind Brandon Ayuk and Debo Samuel, and so if you even even with Ricky Persaud, because there will be an adjustment for this rookie, I. <laughs> I want to keep these guys together for at least one more year. Oh, Debo, I, that's my Debo, preference. Ayuk, Persaud, Jennings, it all looks a lot better together. I agree with that. Think about in, in the playoffs when Debo went down. Think of who was out there running routes. Chris Conley. Go back to the fourth quarter of the Super Bowl when Debo had to come out of that game. Who was running routes? Like It was Ray Ray McLeod, Jennings, and Chris Conley. So, yeah, the, like the league is trending toward having three wide receiver sets. The Niners aren't necessarily some heavy three wide receiver set team, but he is better than the guys that I was mentioning. Yeah, no, I, well, that's why when we were conversa- conversing earlier this week, I'm like, Chris Colley, why is Chris Colley getting – dude had two catches in the postseason. Like, we're, all no, of a sudden what we're, we're saying is, him. I think what people are saying is that if a guy with the least amount of pedigree and Chris Connolly can make some big catches, when you draft somebody who has a higher pedigree yeah. or what you believe to be a better overall so. body of work, then you, you can so. project that that guy can contribute. You hope so. You hope so. You hope so. That's always the hope. You never know. Just never know. Let's go to the Lions, man. Um, I, I like Pearsall, though, but I like him better with Ayuk and Debo. I like him a lot better a with Ayuk and Debo. A lot of people feel that way. Let's see what happens today as the Niners are still. Uh, we'll play the Lynch sound, too. He's, we're, uh, oh, here it is. Lynch, you guys still trading? Never close the door on a trade. I mean, we, um, you know, we'll, we'll always listen, and, and, and we have, and, uh, but uh, we like our group as it stands. And yeah, Kyle, I, do you guys? I, wanna, I read that as we're trading. Commanders are in play. Carolina, New still, England. The phones are still. Yeah, ready. the phones are hot. Kyle, shade ahead. On if the Niners wanted a first runner for Brendan Ayuk. Yeah, I thought it was unlikely going into it, but that doesn't mean that it can't happen. Um, so I mean, you listen to everything. Everything's about trying to improve our team as much as we can for 2024 without jeopardizing 25 as much as possible. So that's everything you look into, and um, whenever that opportunity comes, whichever way, if you can improve your team, you do that. It's sometimes it's hard to picture proving your team though um, without them. So the fact that they're openly discussing that, discussing. That, hey, yeah, anything's on the table, but I didn't think I could get a first-round pick for Ayuk. The fact that they are acknowledging the trade or the potential trade is wild to me. And I wonder how Brendan Ayuk feels about that. Is he less inclined? I guess when you get the dollar slides in front of your face, he'll sign anyway. But is he less inclined to want to come back here? Did you see what he he apparently texted? They have a group uh, chat. I don't know who's in it. He said fire pick. Yeah. I'm not going to lie, fire pick. But to me, like I thought of two things instantly. If Ayuk is still in contact with them on a on a group chat, like there's clearly some communication yeah, in a Lynch, positive way. Lynch just said that. And then and then the second part is I think he has, is expressing he still wants to be here. Like if he was uh, tapped out or whatever, like why would you even comment? You know what I mean? Yeah. Now no. Debo, you know, seeing the shift that now Debo, because during the day as things were progressing, like, oh, now Debo's on the block. Were they playing a smoke screen the entire time with Ayuk? Don't know. <laughs> the whole D. Well, what I keep coming back to with Debo is their social media accounts promoted the hell out of Debo changing his number from 19 to number one. And they're printing out number one jerseys. Yeah. So all of a sudden, have you're going to see one Debo? in, in, in I, live? I have not seen one. Okay. I don't know if anybody's I would wait on one, that. But I wouldn't pay for it now. I wouldn't be paying for any Speak, <laughs> Speaking of jerseys, did you see the one guy who didn't sign the licensing? Uh, Marvin Harrison Jr. Yeah, he pulled a Barry Bonds. Barry like Bonds it. used to be, you know, le- yeah. left field player 99. You know what I mean? Marvin Harrison Jr. And he's not a part of it, so you can't buy. 